Alex Antonucci is the kicker for the Rochester Yellow Jackets. He is preparing to kick off. Case will drop back Brian Metalsitz and Dan Calabrese to run back this opening kickoff. Rochester in their traveling white uniforms with the dark blue helmets striped in yellow, yellow numerals on the fronts and backs of the jerseys in case in their home blue uniforms, tops and bottoms with the white helmets and the blue Spartan logo. And we are just about ready to get the home portion of the schedule underway. It's great to have you with us tonight for Case Western Reserve Spartans football. The lights are on, but it is still uh, fairly bright here somewhat overcast and 70 degrees here at game time in Cleveland, Ohio. Antonucci is ready to go. Calabrese and Metal sit set up back at their own 10 yard line and away we go in Spartans football tonight. Calabrese takes it at the 18, angles back toward the middle of the field. He is wiped out as he gets out to the 27 yard line. A nine yard return for Calabrese and the Spartans' offense will jog onto the field. <laughs> Eric Olson will get the start at quarterback for the second consecutive week. The junior out of Bethel Park, PA, will engineer the Spartans offensively. He'll jog out with a four-receiver set. Manny Secre jogs out. He'll flank Olson in the shotgun formation as the lone setback. Olsen calls out the signals. First play from scrimmage will go to Secre on a little screen out to the right side, and Secre gets out across the 32, maybe the 33, and they mark him out of bounds closer to the 35, and the Spartans throw to the freshman running back, Manny Secre, and he picks up five yards, second down for Case. That's just a long handoff, and they get Secre moving while he catches the football. And then it becomes a question, who's faster to the corner, Secre or the outside linebacker? Second down and four from the 35-yard line. So a pickup of six on the little screen to Manny Secre, the 5'10 freshman out of Miami, Florida. There's the snap back to Olsen. Draw play to Secre across the 35, out to the 40. Tripped up on an ankle tackle at the 45-yard line. It's a first down for the Spartans as they go to Secre for the second straight time, this time on a draw. Well, if he doesn't get tripped up at that point, Brian Metalsitz had crossed in front of him, made a great block on Corey Ham, and Secre had the sideline, and it would have been hard to stop for Rochester as Secre would have snuck in behind that block of Brian Metalsitz. Brian Rice lines up wide to the left. Metalsitz is in a slot to the left side. In motion is Lap Sevic. They'll hand it to Lapsevic on a sweep over to the left side, far side of the field. He gets hit and tackled at the 50-yard line, but a flag comes out on the play. No score, first quarter just underway here at Case Field. We'll pick up the call momentarily. 13.57 to play here in the opening quarter, no score. Illegal shift there on the Spartans' end. Did you pick it up? Well, you had Lapsevic coming in motion as he moved back, and one of the, the backs in the backfield shifted without resetting. Initially, I thought they were going to say there were only six men on the line of scrimmage because Bryce Coleman was the end on an unbalanced line, which we saw a lot of last week and last year. But in that case, they're going to say Lapsevic left early along with a motion man in the backfield. Five-yard walk-off pushes the ball back to the case 40. First down and 15, Olsen to throw. He is hit and tackled. Sack recorded by the Yellow Jackets. Getting in there to wipe out Olsen was Zach Cicero, the outside linebacker out of Fairport, New York. He records the sack, and the football will be back at the 34-yard line. Well, Cicero came on a blitz off the far side, and when he did get to Olsen, he went low. He went down a right around the hamstrings and bent Olsen in half in a very awkward manner. Starting to get a rain shower here at Case Field now. Second down and 21 from the Case 34. They go to Secre on a screen, cuts it back middle of the field and dives to the 39 yard line. A pickup of five. Tony Ortega fought off three blocks. He kind of zigzagged between a couple of linemen for Case. Neither one of them was able to really get their hands on him and push him out of the way. And he was able to meet Secre Stop him well short 
of even picking up the losses that Case incurred with the penalty and the sack. Ortega just a sophomore, a Rochester product out of McQuaid Jesuit High School. It's third down and 16 now for Case. No score first quarter. Football marked at the 39-yard line of the Spartans. Olsen directing traffic, getting the play set. Just one on the play clock. Did he get it off? They just did get it off. Olsen guns it middle of the field. Diving catch by the Spartans. And now they're, now they're say going that. to say it's waved off. Eric Street with a diving attempt. It looked like he got it, Ed, but the official right on top of the call says it was a trap or that it came loose, and it's fourth down for Case and very close to an impressive catch by Eric Street. That would have been Street's first catch of the season. Street out of Barberton. Played his high school ball at and Coventry. Spartans are missing a player. We have 10 players. Oh, no, they did get the yep. 11. Came out of the, it was standing behind the center. Here's the snap back to Olsen, the punter, and he kicks a high punt that lands at the 45-yard line. There will not be a return. It takes a case bounce and rolls back to the Rochester 30-yard line. That's a 31-yard punt, no return, and the Yellow Jackets will come out for their first offensive possession in a scoreless game. Your officials tonight, the referee is Daniel Potopsky. The umpire is James Dinky. Linesman, Dale Smith. The line judge is Tom Freeman. The back judge is Travis Snyder. The field judge, Dan Cosma. And the side judge is Bill Foltz. Well, if you've followed our broadcast the last three years, you're going to hear some familiar names. Brazen Subic is the quarterback. He drops back to throw. Subic guns it left side. Catch is made on the near sideline out at the 43-yard line. A pickup of 13 as they go to Thomas Hayes. Hayes, the junior out of Syracuse, hauls that one in. Well, and they went right to work on Brandon Flick, who's playing for Kerry Dieter, who is not playing tonight. And Flick got run off the ball, and Hayes stopped and brought it back almost like a real sharp out. And Flick had his back turned to the throw. Yep. Subic with a nice throw right to the numbers. They will hand this one off to our buddy Clarence Onyaruka. Onyaruka dives straight ahead and gets out close to midfield. Out uh, near the 48-yard line. He peels off six. Clarence Onyaruka. Twelve times in his career he has rushed for 100 or more yards twice against the Spartans, including last season. But Eddie was injured in week three of what was to be his final collegiate season. Missed the rest of the year. Petitioned for a sixth season, and it was granted by the NCAA. Here's a little screen pass out. It's caught on the right side by Willie Roberson, the 5'5 sophomore out of Monmouth Junction, New Jersey. And he gets across midfield. They'll mark him down at the 47-yard line. That should be a, a run. Like a first down. And well, and it should count as a run for Roberson as he caught that on the backside of a lateral pass from Brazen Subic. Out to the 47, a pickup of five and a first down. Rochester operating in case territory, no score first quarter. This pass is knocked down as Subic trying to throw it over the middle on a little slant. Looked like it was intended for Roberson again, and one of the Spartans knocked it down. And we continue to get a, a pretty heavy rain falling right now, but the sun is out as well, a sun shower, Ed. <laughs> well, I haven't seen the sun all day, and then it decides to rain and poke out at the same time. And uh, right now it uh, is causing us to uh, not be able to see the game, which is uh, a slight inconvenience for uh, the broadcasters. Well, and you couple that with the yellow numbers on white jerseys. Second down and 10 from the 47. Anyaruka gets the handoff straight ahead, dragging some Spartans with him as he gets close to the 41-yard line. They'll mark his knee down at the 42. Calabrese had a chance for him in the backfield, couldn't wrap him up, couldn't circle the ankles. All he did was clip him, and Anyaruka walked right through that tackle. Now for those of you watching our video webcast, you can see the rain coming down fairly steadily. Right now, on the turf here at Case Field, Anya Ruka 
212 out of painted post New York. He is the man in the backfield. Draw play. They'll hand it to him across the 40 to the 35. Cuts to the near side to the 30. Flag down. And Anya Ruka ran out of bounds out at the 19-yard line. Garrett Kessel's going to get called for a push in the back. The wide receiver out there trying to seal the corner. It was a little too convincing in his block. They will uh, mark this one back against the Yellow Jackets. We have not gotten the official signal yet from the field. Stephen Roby finally ran Anya Ruka out of bounds, but this play is coming back. They list Anya Ruka at 5'11", 212 pounds. I think they need to get a new measuring tape. He is a big man. <laughs> he a, looks a lot taller than 5'11". Had a brother that played uh, basketball at the University of Rochester, so a, a very familiar name over the last decade uh, in Rochester athletics. He was quite a rim rocker at the University of Rochester. And uh, Clarence now a graduate student in the uh, business school at the University of Rochester, an outstanding uh, student academically and has been an outstanding football player for the Yellow Jackets as well. It'll be close to a first down. The penalty does go against Garrett Kessel. They'll mark it back. Nope, they're going to call it a first down. Even with the 10-yard penalty, it still was past the first down marker. So first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Football is at the 37 of the Yellow Jackets. So... First and 10, under 10 to play here in the first quarter. We have no score. Rochester marching on their first drive of the football game. Brazen Subic with a man in motion. Early. And flags come out. Gavin Klaus, the left tackler. Well, who was at the left tackle position? He is the right tackle by trade, but the left tackle is called for the move. Five more against Rochester. Thomas Norman was the man in motion, and he started in motion. There was movement on the line, getting the uh, flags to come out. First down, 15 for the Yellow Jackets. Football mark now back on the 42-yard line of the Spartans. Back to throw Subic, guns it for the sideline, overthrows the intended target, Thomas Hayes. It'll be second down and 15 for the Yellow Jackets with 9.23 to play here in the opening quarter of the home opener at Case Field. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty, our producer and engineer for the broadcast tonight, is Mike Becker, stationed high atop Case Field. Case 1-0, it is the season opener for Rochester. They will snap this one and hand it off. That's Ham Far on that. side to Kobe Ham, who normally is in at free safety, but they utilize his speed for that play. A jet sweep over to the far side, and the Spartans stop him at the 36-yard line. Matthew Davis stayed home, was right there to meet Ham as he tried to turn it upfield. Davis put a shoulder into him and then put him into the turf. Well, Ed, we were tipped off before the game that they may run that play, and they sure did as Kobe Ham came in to take that handoff. It was a direct snap to Adam Brinkman. He handed it off to Ham. He picked up six on the play, third down and nine from the 35-yard line. Subic to throw. The pass is picked off by the Spartans. Grabbed on an interception by Kevin Nossum, the junior linebacker. That ball may have been tipped to Nossum. He hangs on to it, and the Spartans take over on the turnover. Well, it sailed initially, and the Rochester receiver went up, but I believe he got a piece of it, and Nossum then corralled it, and Case ends the threat with the interception, very similar to what we saw last week at John Carroll. Carroll, the blue streaks moving, Rochester moving as well, and then an interception ends the drive. Kevin Nossum with his first career interception. He had eight tackles and a fumble recovery last week. Case ball at the 21-yard line. Olsen to throw it. Pass was intended for metal sits. He was hit right as the ball arrived, and it was incomplete. 
Very slow developing play. I know it's that the option inside handoff fake and then you fire one out to the receiver on that bubble screen. We could call it the Zach Homick play as we saw Homick run that over and over and over last year. But that one looked a little slow, a, a beat behind where it has been over the last couple of years. Eric Street and Metal Sits are lined up together on the right side. Casey. Brian Rice and Lapsevic on the left. Barry. Secre is in the backfield. The snap to Olsen, time to throw, fires it, caught on the near side, hauled in by Eric Street out at the 40-yard line. It's good for a case first down. Ham dropped a hammer, but Street managed to hold on. Took a big hit at the 40-yard line. I was going to say, Dave, as that play was getting started, you notice the case offensive line spread way out. Big split. It forced that defensive line to go wide. Takes a little bit longer to get to the quarterback in that setup. Gives Olsen just a little bit more of a chance to throw the football. They'll line up in an eye formation now. Christian Anderson at fullback. Secre is the tailback. They'll hand it to Secre. Cuts it back to the inside and gets out close to the 44-yard line. Five-yard pickup for Manny Secre. He was finally wiped out on the play. The tackle recorded by Zach Cicero of Rochester. Second down and five from the 44. Well, Secre comes limping to the sideline, but he was looking for that over-pursuit of a very active defense from Rochester, hoping that as they move towards the side of the sweep, he could find that lane to cut back in between. Second and five, seven and a half to play. First quarter, we have no score. Olsen will keep it on the ground, hands it to Reardon. Loose football, they fight for it. There's a big pile up at the 42-yard line. Reardon looked like he got it back. They will untangle the twisted arms, and the signal is... Third down. Case football. Yeah, Kenny Reardon got back on it. That was Reardon just dropped the football. Olsen put it right in there. They lose two on the fumble. Third down and seven from the Case 42-yard line. No score first quarter. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty from Case Field. The rain has subsided. Lights are on here. Fireworks to follow the game tonight. Olsen will work from the shotgun, third and seven. Back to throw, guns it over the middle. It's caught by Secre out to the 50, and it's good for a Case first down. Eight-yard pickup. Secret well, right back in there and still limping a little bit, Ed. Well-designed play by Case. They had three receivers to the left. That forced the Rochester secondary and linebackers to kind of move a half step to the left. Secret came through the line, cleared out to the open right side, and it was one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, and he beat him to the first down marker. Metal sits again. And Rice lines up on the right side. Flag comes out as uh, Rochester is clapping. It might have been some movement on the case offensive line. Shea Baker is going to get called for just the shoulder bob, not so much the head, but his shoulders popped up enough that cost case five on the illegal procedure. They'll mark it back now to the 45-yard line, first down and 15, 6-11 to play here in the first quarter. They'll get Reardon back in there. Secret comes to the sideline. Looks like he might be cramping up a little bit as he goes down now and will get stretched out. Rochester in a zone. Case has an opportunity on the near side of the field. Two receivers, only one defensive back on the right side for Olsen. He's looking downfield, guns it middle of the field, wide open, medals it, slides down, makes the catch at the 31-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. And that was medals working that zone as the slot receiver on the right side uncovered off the line, got a free run down the field, got in behind the linebackers in front of the two deeps, and caught the ball on a sliding catch at the 30-yard line. Nice recognition by Olsen, a 24-yard pickup. First and 10 at the Rochester 30-yard line. Olsen under center. Anderson is in at fullback. Reared in at tailback in an eye formation. Two receiver set, both on the left. Olsen starts to roll to the right side, guns it to the sideline. It's incomplete. The intended target was the tight end, Bryce Coleman. But that play seemed to be busted from the start, Ed, as Olsen rolled out right. Everybody else went left, and he had to wait. Well, on it was, Coleman to get there. It was designed, but 
He got pressure on the backside. He wasn't supposed to have that. They were hoping that the defensive line for Rochester would crash down on the sweep. Instead, they pursued into the backfield, and when Olsen turned around to roll back out to find Coleman, he had a Rochester player in his face. 5.23 to go. First quarter, no score. Second and 10 case from the Rochester 30. They'll hand this one to Reardon. Hits the pile, bounces off, still on his feet, but is finally wrestled to the ground. Getting in on the tackle for Rochester was Chris Bickford, the senior defensive end out of Willis, California. Traded his helmet for a tackle. He'll get that strap back on. Coleman comes out. It will be Street and Metal sits on the left. Check that. It's Brian Rice and Metal sits on the left side. Street is on the right. They will snap it to Olsen. He's in trouble. Gets rid of it. Pass is caught by Reardon to the 25 to the 20. Dives ahead down to the 16-yard line. First down, Spartans. Got a and flag they, down in the backfield. It could be a late hit against Rochester. Now, flag did not appear to be on the play itself. We'll see. The Spartans go to the backfield again with a little screen pass to Reardon. Well, Rochester gave away the blitz there, and Case slowed it down with the screen pass. Face mask against the Yellow Jackets. From the 17, it'll take it half the distance, Dave. They will mark it at the eight and a half yard line. So this becomes a big gainer for the Spartans. 16 on the screen pass, and then down to the nine is where they will have it on the scoreboard. Rochester has no safety over the top. It's man to man on the left side. High in the backfield, Reardon is in at tailback. He'll get the handoff, runs behind Christian Anderson, takes a big hit, bent backward as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Zach Cicero gave him a lick. We have a case player down. That's Shea Baker, the left guard, who is playing for an injured Tony Opperman tonight. Opperman with a knee injury last week. He is unavailable and in street clothes for the ball game today. The all UAA guard out of action. Second down and goal from the eight yard line. 350 to go. First quarter. No score. Three tight end set. Coleman is the man in motion as one of them. They'll fake the handoff to Reardon. Rolling right. Olsen in trouble. Gets back to the 10. Is hit and dropped back at the line of scrimmage. Brian Metalsitz is in the back of the end zone jumping up and down <laughs> like he's trying to stretch out. Oh, he had gotten free in the back of the end zone. And Olsen was looking more for Coleman on the release and he missed Ols or he missed Metalsitz deep on the end line for the touchdown. Brendan Pigeon, the junior, came in to make the stop on Olsen. Pigeon was the leading tackler for the Yellow Jackets last year with 64 and a half tackles. 3.15 to go, clock continues to move. Third and goal for the Spartans from the eight yard line. Olsen fakes the handoff. Now he's rushed out of the pocket. He will go down as the Yellow Jackets record the sack. Spencer Miller, the senior nose tackle. Well, the Secondary for Rochester feels they can match up man-to-man -man on the case wide receivers. And because of the confidence in that, they're able to bring more players on the blitz. And there they did. And as Case adjusted to the blitz, Miller, the nose guard, was able to get free, get his hand on Olsen to start with, and throw the timing off. They will spot this one for Dan Vassell on the left hash mark at the 22. So it'll be a 32-yard field goal attempt. Vassell was one out of two last week. The snap and hold are good. The kick is on the way, and it is no good. Wave it off right side. The Yellow Jackets will take over as the Spartans miss fire on the field goal with 2.18 to go here in the first quarter. We have no score, and the Yellow Jackets dodge the bullet head following the turnover and a key personal foul call. They are able to keep Case off the board. 
So the Yellow Jackets will come back out. Clarence Onyaruka lines up in the backfield behind Brazen Subic. No score. Late first quarter, 2.18 to play here. Season opener for the Yellow Jackets. It's game two for Case. Zubik will hand it to Clarence Onyaruka. He has hit and falls forward after the initial contact out to the 25-yard line. Second down and five coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Spartans, Rich Doolin in on the tackle. Anya Rooka last year had just 171 yards rushing on 34 carries, but I think he had 22 or 23 carries in the game against Case and was 110 or 112 yards in that game. Twice in his career, he has surpassed the 100-yard mark against Case Subic trying to keep Mike, it. Michael and Harris. Michael Harris <laughs> puts a hit and drops him back at the 26-yard line, so they give him one on the play. It's third down and four now. You know, Michael Harris might be the kind of player that they give coffee to or caffeine to calm down. He's got just such a high-energy motor. 270-pound junior out of Shaker Heights records his first tackle of the day. We have one minute to go here in the first quarter at Case Field. No score. Zubik calls out the signals. Man in motion is Hayes. They will go back and fake the handoff to Anya Ruka. They will throw it. The pass is caught by Hayes for first down yardage out at the 40 and a half yard line. Clock oh. stops with 48 seconds left. Something broke down there. Ryan Ferguson was somehow responsible for two players, both the tight end and Hayes, the wide receiver. Hayes over the top, the tight end, Norman underneath, and Ferguson kind of got caught in no man's land. As soon as he committed forward, Subic just threw over the top and connected with Hayes. Hayes out of Solvay High School in Syracuse, New York. He holds that one in. We have 34 seconds left in the first quarter. No score. Case in Rochester. One man in motion far side. They will hand it to Anya Ruka. He is hit and knocked down. Jake Adams on knifing through. Adams had 12 tackles a week ago. He Trips up Anya Ruka there. He gets out to the 41. Right back to the line of scrimmage, and that will be the final play of the first quarter. We have no score. Case and Rochester after one. Second quarter action is coming up in just a moment here on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty. Through one quarter, we have no score. Case threatened. They had the football inside the 10, but could not punch it in. Rochester with the football now. It'll be second down and 10. From the Rochester 41-yard line. The Yellow Jackets will be moving left to right here in the second quarter. It has been a somewhat damp evening. Little rain shower early right now, raining very lightly. And the skies do not look uh, overly threatening, at least as far as we can see here, but there is some rain in the area, so that could play a factor as we move along tonight. Very nice to have you with us, joining us on our webcast tonight. And so wherever you are, we hope you're having a nice weekend, and we appreciate you making Spartans football part of your weekend plans. They'll snap it back to Brazen Zubik. He will go to the air. It's caught 45-50 across midfield and out near the sideline. They say he and got no, out of bounds. And no flag down. There should have been a penalty for illegal man downfield as the slot receiver stepped up and was on the line of scrimmage covered by the outside receiver on the far side. And Thomas Newman was the receiver on the play. Tight end made a nice catch and then added yardage 
to break into Spartans territory. It's first and 10 Rochester from the 46 yard line. They will line up an eye in the backfield. Fullback is Joe Cicero. Anya Ruka is the tailback. Anya Ruka will get the call, picking his way forward, dives ahead. He is hit and knocked backwards. Ryan Ferguson gets in there to push Anya Ruka backwards. He had 31 yards in the first quarter to Anya Ruka on six carries. Or check that five carries. Manny Secre leading the Spartans with 21 yards on three carries. Secre also two catches for 13 yards. 13.55 to go. Second quarter. Here at Case Field, we have no score. Newman in motion. They will hand it to Anya Ruka. He is hit. And again, drop. Nice defensive play by the Spartans. Michael Harris and Jake Adams there for the Spartans. Harris makes another good play, comes right to the sideline. Yeah, Harris wrapped him up and jogs over. Football is marked at the 44-yard line of the Spartans. It is third down and eight for Rochester in a scoreless game, second quarter. 13.20 to go before halftime. Zubik checks the wristband for the play. He is in the shotgun. Anya Ruka lined up directly behind the quarterback in the shotgun. Zubik to throw on third down, middle of the field, looking for Hayes and overshoots the target. Incomplete, fourth down and eight coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Defensively, Brandon Flick was on Hayes, but the pass sailed on Zubik. Yeah, they keep working on Brandon Flick. Seeing if the... Junior, who's filling a slot tonight, is up to the task. That ball looked like it sailed, though, coming out of Zubik's hands. Mike Carson is the punter for Rochester. Dan Calabri sets up at his own 12. The Spartans will get the ball back. No score. Here is the snap back to Carson. He'll put the foot into it. End over end kick. Calabri's asked for and gets a fair catch. Back at the 11-yard line. Carson only averaged 31 yards a punt last season on 37 punts. Well, that time it was 45 with no return. And yeah, make it 44 as they will mark it at the 12. So the Spartans will come out with a long field ahead. No score, just under 13 to go here in the first half. We're at Case Field. Home opener for the Spartans. They are 1-0. and They defeated John Carroll a week ago. Eric Olson calls out the signals, goes back, hands it to Reardon. Tries to break out to the left side, and he is hit and tackled. Four guys for Rochester. Johnny on the spot. It was Scott Campbell, big number 99, the 5'10 sophomore, out of Chagrin Falls, Ohio, here locally, to make the tackle. 12 and a half to play, clock moving. Loss of two on the play. And it's second down and 12 from Case's own 10 yard line. Olsen in the shotgun, calls out the signal. Secre has checked in in the backfield. Four receiver set, two on each side. Metalsitz is the slot receiver. They'll hand it to Secre. He has tripped up as he gets out across the 10 and slides down at the 12. So he picks up the two. The Spartans lost, but they're looking at a third and 10. Olsen getting them set. Three receivers will split out wide to the right. On the left side, Brian Rice is the lone receiver. Secre stays in the backfield. Olsen under center. He will throw it, and he throws behind metal sits on a slant. Fourth and 10 coming up for Case, and Olsen will stay on the field and punt this one away. Zach Cicero came untouched on a delayed blitz. A hole opened up right over the guard. Cicero took advantage of it and plastered Olsen as he got rid of the football. So the Spartans will punt. Olsen will be stationed in his own end zone. Back deep, Byron Seguise and Willie Roberson for the... Yellow Jackets. Here is the 
kick. The punt spins back toward the 48-yard line. It is off the receiver's body, and the Spartans will come up with it. Spartans will keep it on the fumble. It's the second turnover of the night for the Yellow Jackets. That looked like Seguiz trying to field the punt. It went off his hands, off his knee, rolled out to the 40-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will take over. Boy, it looked like they were trying, trying to pick up about 15 ping-pong balls that you dropped on a concrete surface. That ball kicked around forever, and finally Case came up with it. Spartans fell on it. I'm not sure who exactly corralled it, but it uh, was squirting around down there. First and 10, 11-23 to go here in the second quarter. So the Spartans catch a break. What should have been good field position for Rochester ends up giving the ball right back to Case at their own 40. Olsen with an eye in the backfield. Anderson and Reardon. They'll fake to Reardon. Olsen looking to throw it. Now he rushes over to the right side, tries to dive back to the line of scrimmage. He didn't quite make it. Might have lost a half yard there. The tackle recorded by the Yellow Jackets' Bill Campy out of Flemington, New Jersey. Ten fifty to play. Second quarter. No score here at Case Field. Spartans trying to sustain a drive here. Operating in Rochester territory. Time will be called here. Case will take a timeout. It's their first timeout. They'll have two remaining here in the first half. We'll take a timeout as well. No score. 10.38 to play here in the second quarter. Back with more after these words on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering world cuisine created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook. Back at Case Field, 10.38 to play here in the second quarter. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty. The Spartans and Yellow Jackets tangling here tonight in game two of the 2011 season for the Spartans. It is the season opener for the Yellow Jackets. Eric Olson calling out the signals. Junior quarterback for the Spartans. Drops back to throw, guns it far side. It's caught out there. Hauled in by Brian Rice. He is still on his feet, and they finally force him down, saying he stayed in bounds. I don't know how they could call that in bounds, Ed, but football ended up laying out of bounds. But it's at the 46-yard line, second down and five coming up for Case. Oh, Manny Secre has checked back in. Kenny Reardon has come to the sideline. Ten minutes to play here in the second quarter. Case and Rochester scoreless. Football marked at the Case 46-yard line. Ten on the play clock now as Olsen approaches the line of scrimmage. Secre shifts in the backfield. He's the lone setback. He'll come out of the backfield, and the whole play breaks down. Olsen tried to keep it, but he was hit and knocked down. Well, Case had an advantage. Rochester was in a 4-2-5 nickel package, and they were backing up into a deep umbrella type of zone. And the slot receiver, Brian Metalsitz, was wide open, running down the seam. Tackle recorded by Chris Bickford. And Olsen will punt this one away. Roberson and Seguiz back deep for the Yellow Jackets. Here is the punt by Olsen, a high end-over-end -end kick. A fair catch will be called for, and it is hauled in by Rochester. Kobe Ham. Yeah, Ham was in there that time on the punt receiving core, and he secures the football. A nice kick by Eric Olson. 
And the fair catch was made. We'll see exactly where they spot the football. It is going to be at the 27-yard line. 31-yard punt with no return for Eric Olson. And here come the Yellow Jackets now. Scoreless ball game. Brazen Zubik takes the snap, drops back to throw, guns it far sideline. It's caught out there, turning and heading upfield out to the 45-yard line. Pass was caught. I'm not sure if that was Thomas Newman or not. I believe that was Newman on the receiving end of that, number 83. It's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. They continue to work against Brandon Flick on that side of the field. I believe now it was Garrett Kessel, number 81, who made the catch over on the far sideline, which was next to the Rochester bench. Kessel is in motion now. They will hand the football to Clarence Onyaruka, and he spins down close to midfield, picks up four on the first down play. Second down and six coming up for the Yellow Jackets. 8.23 to play here in the second quarter. We have no score. Onyaruka always seems to fall forward, Dave. It doesn't seem like they can stand him up or push him back. Wade Self had a hit on him a yard, maybe a yard and a half past the line of scrimmage, and Anya Rooka made four out of it. Second down and six from the Rochester 49-yard line. Brazen Zubik calls out the signals. The senior takes the snap, stands in the pocket, guns it out, caught by Kessel again at the 45, down to the 40, run out of bounds. Kessel with his second reception of the drive. The Yellow Jackets break into Case territory with another first down pass from Zubik to Garrett Kessel. Kessel out of Avon, New York. Just a sophomore. A lot of young players on the starting unit for the Yellow Jackets, particularly on the offensive line. They'll drop out Jared Hilton to the right side now. Newman in motion. They will hand to Anya Ruka on the first down play. Bounces off a tackler. Gets down close to the 36-yard line. Still forward. Always positive yards as he gets those shoulder pads ahead of his knees and hips and never takes a direct hit. Yeah, he has a load to bring down. Spartans have to gang tackle tonight against Anya Ruka. Twice against the Spartans, he has notched 100-plus yards. Under seven to play now here in the first half. We have no score. Second down and eight after a two-yard pickup. The football is marked at the 36-yard line of the Spartans. Yellow Jackets football, scoreless ball game. Two receivers on the right. Anya Ruka blocking for Zubik. He'll go deep downfield. Man wide open. It's caught by Hilton. He is hit and dropped just short of the goal line. It's inside the five. They'll mark him down at the two-yard line. 34 yards on the reception by Jared Hilton. Now Hilton just found a spot. Again, he got behind the defense. And Zubik threw it up. It was underthrown. He had to wait on it, did Hilton. Managed to haul it in. And was brought down by Brandon Flick inside the five. Hilton, the junior out of Silverton, Oregon, makes the reception. Football is at the two. Do I get to call this play? You think they might think about Anya Ruka here. They will pitch it to the big man. He puts his head down, goes straight ahead, and he is going to be Short. in. There's the signal. Oh, the one referee on the far side was going to mark the football. The line judge comes in and calls it a touchdown for Clarence Onyaruka, his first of the season. They will set up for the PAT as they have taken a 6 to nothing lead. Antonucci. We'll try and kick it through. There is the snap and the hold. The kick is on its way, and it is good. And the Yellow Jackets take a 7 to nothing lead with 6.02 to play here in the second quarter. Case football when we come back. You're listening to the Spartans on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. 
This year, Qdoba will cater like 10,000 parties. Where? When? I'm there. Well, these parties are hypothetical. I was just talking about Qdoba catering. Hot taco bars with fire-grilled chicken and marinated steak, flour tortillas, and taco shells. You'll also get their hand-smashed guacamole, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and salsa. They'll deliver to your home or office, and they'll even set it up. Can I bring a guest? Oh, boy. Visit Qdoba.com today for more information about Qdoba Catering. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. Well, Rochester strikes first here tonight. They take a 7 to nothing lead with 6.02 to play here in the quarter number two. Spartans will get the football back as the uh, Yellow Jackets prepare for the kickoff. Clarence Onyuruka with a two-yard scoring plunge. Six plays, 73 yards, officially on the scoring drive. Onyuruka now up to 41 yards on the night, 10 carries. Bra uh, Brazen Zubik, 6 of 10 for 105 yards. The big hit was the pass to Hilton inside the 5. Metal sits at the 21, receives the kick, straight up the middle of the field, got across the 35. Then he is caught and dropped near the 38-yard line. Good field position for Case. Joe Cicero on the tackle. Why well, that family can hit, can't they, between Joe Cicero and Zach Cicero. They have made some big tackles already in the first half tonight. So far for Rochester, Chris Bickford leading the way with seven tackles. For Case, Ryan Ferguson with six tackles so far. Olsen calling out the signals under center. Reardon is in at tailback. There's motion against Case as flags come back out. They had the... Tied in Rob Lajeunesse out of Aurora in the football game. He was the man in motion. But they're going to get Brendan Rollet on a movement call and a cost case five. Now mark it back to the 33. First down and 15. Zach Scott will check in for the Spartans at wide receiver. Scott the junior out of West Allegheny High School in Imperial PA. He'll line up Far wide to the left. Metal sits. Is in a slot position on the left side. We also have Brian Rice far to the right. Secre is in the game with Olsen. He'll take the snap and fires it straight ahead down to the turf. Almost looked like a spike head. Well, I think he realized that Secre had no room to go, so he threw it low where Manny couldn't even come up with a catch. Rather than waste the yardage, he just fired it into the ground or near the legs of Secre. Second down and 15 for Case. Working in their own territory at the 33-yard line. Seven to nothing, Rochester. First half action here at Case Field. Blitz coming from the right side. Olsen takes the snap. Here they come. Stands in the pocket. Fires it downfield for Metal Sits. He makes the catch. All the way down to the 42-yard line. They're going to say he dropped the ball. Now they're going to say it's incomplete. Metalsitz hit the deck. And the ball came loose. Boy, that was very, very close to a terrific catch by Metalsitz, who went up in between two defenders and almost hauled that baby in. Well, for Olson, he stood there and took the hit, but initially they recognized the blitz from the left or from his right. And instead, it came from the left as Cicero came in from the outside linebacker position. 5.44 to play. Second quarter, third down and 15. Deep zone, deep zone. Olsen takes the snap, drops back. Good protection. Now it breaks down, and he will go down. Well, it was set up nicely for just a moment. And then getting in there to make the stop, we saw him earlier, Kanan Webb, big number 99 out of Syracuse, the defensive end. Records the sack, and it's fourth down and 25 for Case. Clock moving with 518 as Case sets up for the punt. Olsen will take it back at his 
own 10. And he will kick this one away. Line drive punt with good uh, carry all the way back to the 30-yard line. Brought back by Willie Roberson. He gets out close to the 37. Very nice punt by Eric Olson to keep from tipping the field. Now here come the Yellow Jackets. I would expect with the lead to see more of a steady diet of clearance on Yurucka, especially here with under five minutes to play in the half. That was a That's not on Yurucka in the backfield. Yeah, he is out right now. 47-yard punt by Olsen, a seven-yard return, first and 10 from the 39-yard line. They will put this one on the ground to Roberson on a reverse, and he is hit and tackled. Spartans, Adam Watson getting in there to blow that play up, and it ends up losing three yards back to the 36-yard line. Now, Anya Rooka is still not in the game. Anya Rooka standing on the far sideline behind the official and the down marker. He had his helmet off in his hand. Seven zip Rochester, 420 to play here, second quarter. Brazen Zubik stands in the shotgun. He will take it and fire it out. Caught by Garrett Kessel at the 40. They pick up four and they get back close to where they started the drive. But a long third down coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Third down and nine. Chris Labano is the tailback in the ball game now. Labano the junior, five foot seven, 180 pounds out of Brooklyn, New York. He filled in for Anyuruka when Anyuruka was hurt a year ago. Newman, the tight end in motion, lines up as a slot receiver, third and nine, back to throw Zubik, pump fakes. Now he'll run for it, gets to the 45, to the 50, first down yardage, and he's hit and knocked out of bounds by the Spartans, but not before a first down scamper, Stephen Roby finally Knocked him out of bounds. Initially, you wanted to go over the middle. He wanted to go to Lobano for a little screen pass in the middle of the field. When it was clogged up by the case defense, he took off with the ball and had presence of mind to pick up the first down. 3.15 to go. First half, 7-0 Rochester. Spartans and Yellow Jackets. Doing battle here tonight at Case Field in Cleveland, Ohio. A pleasant night. It was rainy earlier, but that has stopped. Uh, dry conditions right now. Back to handoff. Nope, they'll time out. Stop play, and Rochester from the bench, it appeared, asked for a timeout. It was to avoid the delay of game penalty. Play clock was going down. They take <laughs> a timeout. So will we. 7 to nothing, Rochester. 2.54 to play here in the opening half. Back with more in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. Well, the Spartans will have the bye week next week. No game until two weeks from today when the Spartans travel to uh, our favorite uh, destination on the road end, Piper Stadium. Oh, I love Granville. Love Granville, Ohio. One of the uh, nicest uh, plywood uh, press box facilities. Beautiful scenery, though. So we'll be there. It'll be a 1 o'clock game against the Denison Big Red two weeks from today. We'll have uh, audio coverage for you here on Case.edu. Zubik back to throw. Here come the Spartans, and they will get him and knock him down. That's Jake Adams recording the sack. Wade Self, Mike Harris there first. And Adams finished him off as Zubik tried to escape. 
So Jake Adams, who led the Spartans with 12 tackles last week, records his first sack of the season. And that was a big one. Now a second and 19. Case expecting pass. Kevin Nossum comes into the football game. He takes Michael Harris's spot. So Case will drop more into a 3-3-5 defense with Nossum having the ability to even play in the secondary as a six defensive back. Second and 19 from the 44. Zubik makes a run for it, gets back to midfield. Ducks under a tackler, still going. And he is finally tackled and brought down at the 46-yard line. On the yards after contact, Case had several opportunities to stop him on the Rochester side of the 50. And they simply couldn't bring him down. He picks up eight. Third down and nine. Ten-yard pickup on the play. Third down and nine. 90 seconds to go in the half. Seven to nothing, Rochester. Here's the shotgun snap. Anya Ruka is back in, but they go downfield. Man is open. That's Roberson. He makes the catch at the case 25-yard line. 21-yard strike to Roberson. Willie Roberson makes his second catch. And a whistle and a timeout taken by Rochester. That will be their second timeout. They will have one remaining. Case has two left. And the clock stops with 1.15 to play here in the second quarter. We'll keep it here. And Ed, that uh, pass to Roberson hits them certainly into field goal range. It makes a field goal attempt certainly an option if they are not able to get it in. Well, from here it's 42. So certainly have the ability to attempt it from here. But with the way Zubik is really throwing the ball down the middle, especially between the hash marks, there's no reason to think that Rochester won't take a couple of shots at the end zone before the end of the half. 1.15 to go, and it is first and 10. Yellow Jackets, they lead it 7 to nothing. Clarence Anyaruka had a two-yard touchdown run to cap off a 73-yard drive back at the six-minute mark of the second quarter. Case has gotten the ball on two Rochester turnovers tonight, but they have not been able to make anything of it. 1.15 to go, back to action. Zubik takes the snap, rolls right, guns it down toward the end zone. It is caught by Hayes. He dives, and he is in. Touchdown. Well, Zubik took a hit, but he got rid of the football. And Hayes made a nice acrobatic tightrope walk down the sideline, stuck the ball out, and managed to get it inside the pylon for the touchdown. Thomas Hayes, the junior, with a 25-yard touchdown reception for the Yellow Jackets. That makes it 13 to nothing. Rochester. Antonucci on to attempt the PAT. Zubik with the hold. The kick is on the way, and it is good. And the Yellow Jackets lead it by a score of 14 to nothing. 108 remaining before halftime. Case has the ball coming up on the kickoff with two timeouts left. So back to back completions from the senior quarterback, Brazen Zubik. First to Roberson. And then a 25-yard touchdown strike to Thomas Hayes, the junior. 21 to Roberson and then 25 to Hayes. That is uh, covering some ground for the Yellow Jackets. Has a very Wabash feel to it. Are we allowed to say that? (laughs) Wabash had that quick strike in the playoff game here a couple of years ago. Just don't say who caught it. (laughs) <laughs> All right, 108 to play. First half, long way to go in this one, but Case down two touchdowns. Antonucci will kick off. Metal sits and Calabres drop back deep for Case. They'll move right to left, and they will have to put in the hurry up here with 108 to play. 
Antonucci spent probably 25 to 30 minutes during warmups just kicking off, and he really wasn't able to get the ball past the 15 yard line. Metal sits in Calabrese edge up to the 15 right now. Here is the kick, end over end kick, and Metal sits will take it at the 20, right in the middle of the field. 25, 30, straight up the middle to the 35. Dives ahead Fumble and the lost ball. the football, and Rochester has it. Roberson recovers for the Yellow Jackets. Boy, Roberson all over the place, and now you've got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Roberson, who came up taunting the case bench and stands. Why, Ed, what a brain cramp that is. Well, that had a chance to turn it into at least three and possibly six. And now you're going to take your team from the 41-yard line of Case and put them on the 45 of their own. Well, Case, you, uh, Ed, you and I have been doing Case games now. This is our fifth season. I, I don't remember anything like that ever. Not coming up like that, no. And not in that situation. It's a big play, and it, it celebration is needed, but... This will be marked all the way back to the Rochester 43-yard line. You know that Scott Green has to be just going nuts over there. Well, and, and, and Green's not afraid to say it. Green's a former NFL player, and he played with Peyton Manning in Indianapolis during his career and played in Carolina. First and 10 from the 43-yard line, exactly one minute to play. So Case turns it over on the fumble. Zubik downfield looking for Newman. Nice defensive coverage by Dan Calabrese to knock that pass away from Newman well, without there, interfering. There must be something that Rochester found that says you can throw the ball down the seam because really anything deep tonight has been between the hash marks and a straight just fly pattern down the middle by the slot receiver. Yeah, that was very close to a reception. Newman was in a good position, and Calabrese had to come from behind and knock it away. Second down and 10 from their own 43. Yellow Jackets leading it by a score of 14 to nothing. They have the football. Zubik back to throw again. Gets rid of it. Caught by Anya Ruka. Flag comes out. Anya Ruka is tripped up. Wade Self on the tackle. Anya Ruka tripped up at the 45-yard line. It'll be a hold on Willie Ruiz, the... Left tackle. They will mark this one off. And it looks like, well, we'll see where they mark it off from. Well, it should be from the 36 because it was really to keep Subic from getting clobbered as he delivered the screen pass. It was deep in the backfield. You're talking about huge yardage for a ball that was recovered at the case, what, 41, 42-yard line? It's now back to the 33. So they've lost approximately 25 yards since recovering the football. 42 seconds left. They will go back and hand to Anya Ruka. And now they just start to play a conservative here as Anya Ruka is hit and tackled in a timeout taken by the Spartans. With well, 34 seconds left, Anya Ruka was hit and dropped for a loss that time. Well, between the incomplete pass and then the penalty, that Case accepted. And he stopped on Yurika on third down. That's a smart move by Greg Debelak because now with the penalties and a kicker who only averages 31 yards a, a, a boot, there's a possibility of getting this ball near midfield following the punt and a return. And with 34 seconds remaining and one timeout, maybe you either work yourself into field goal range or you throw one up at the end of the half, and we've seen a lot of strange things happen at night here at Case Field on Hail Mary passes. Why not take the opportunity? Who can forget the back-to-back -back catches by Tim Cowdrick? One was wiped out on a penalty. Case again back to the same play and connected with Cowdrick on the uh, final play of the half was against that, Oberlin. Was that Dennison or Oberlin? I knew it was one of the two. It was at the south end of the field, the same end zone that Case will be headed to. Third down and 19. 
Anya Ruka lines up at a tailback position. They have Cicero in at fullback. Anya Ruka in motion. Zubik calls out the signals. Anya Ruka lines up at a receiver position. Now they look to the opposite side of the field. Final but timeout. Zubik goes down. Case records the sack. It looks like Rich Doolin got in there along with Dale English to record the sack on Brazen Zubik all the way back at the 30. Case will spend their final timeout. Well, no win to speak of, and Dan Calabri should catch this ball between the 35 and 40. Case will get it back with about 18, 19 seconds left. Have a chance for a couple of plays. Well, not exactly your textbook drive after recovering a fumble in your opponent's territory. You get called for a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. You have a holding penalty. You have your star running back get stuffed at the line and your quarterback gets sacked twice. For a fourth and 22 with 29 and a half seconds left. Calabrese will set up at his own 35 yard line. He will try and get a return on this one if at all possible. The punter is Mike Carson. There's the snap, a low snap. Carson does get it off and kicks it away from Calabrese. It will bounce all the way down, Ed. Can you believe this? Inside the 10-yard line when it finally stops rolling, it'll be close to the 9. Well, it doesn't matter. It's going to come back. Rochester may even get the football back. They're going to say Case didn't get any of the penalty or any of the football, and they're going to get called for a penalty running into the kicker, possibly roughing the kicker. Yep, the flag and is... And they did. Lying back at the 15-yard line. And so, rather than getting the ball back, Case will come back out defensively. 15 seconds left in the first half. Rochester leading it by a score of 14 to nothing. Well, with the penalty, it'll put the ball near midfield. Rochester has no timeouts left. Or check that they do have one left. And they may take a shot at the end zone as well. So the football will be moved up after the roughing the kicker penalty to the 41-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. From the 32 where the line of scrimmage was. Your 14-yard walk-off. <laughs> All right. Here's the snap. Back to Zubik. Looking to throw. Gives it to Anya Ruka on a screen. Across midfield to the 45. Dives ahead to the 40-yard line. And a whistle. And did Rochester take their final timeout or not? No, they're nope. going to move the chains. They do have one timeout left. 7.6 seconds remaining, and there it is. So we have used all six allotted timeouts here in the first half. And we've taken about a month to play the final minute plus of this half. First and 10 from the 41 yard line for the Yellow Jackets. Following the pass play to Anya Ruka. Six seconds remaining in the first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at the case band performance. We'll have a uh, feature for you. We'll also talk with Rick Bischoff, the Vice President for Enrollment Management here at Case Western Reserve. Ed will take a look at all of the halftime stats for you as well. That's coming up as we keep you entertained here at halftime, if we ever get there. <laughs> well, barring a penalty, this will be the final play of the half. First and 10 from the 41-yard line. Anya Ruka is in the backfield. They will go back, roll out right. Zubik looks to gun it downfield. Hail Mary pass all the way back to the goal line. It is knocked down by Stephen Roby, and that's the end of the first half. So they did take a shot at the end zone looking for their big tight end, Thomas Norman. But the final minute, notwithstanding, at a very good half of football for the Yellow Jackets in their season opener, they take a 14 to nothing lead to the locker room. And the early momentum the case built in the first quarter quickly vanished in the second.